Hello, this is Grace Notes with Yorktown Supervisor Michael Grace. I'm Bruce Apar of Chase Media Group. And immediately, Supervisor, uh, I know you like to talk about what's coming up. Yep. Right? Uh, and we just saw uh, the head of the uh, Hart Library, Pat Barisi, outside. And so we want everybody to know, and Pat wants everybody to know, this weekend is the book sale at the library. Right. Right? Okay. And, um, and, that's, uh, and I want to go to that myself on Friday night. Uh, if you're a friend of the library, you take a preview, and even if you're not, you can go Friday night and sign up and become, become a friend. Right, yeah. and then Saturday, I can't remember. Did she tell you what time it's running Saturday? It's no, but if you go online, yeah. Uh, yeah, you could find out to the, uh, I think it's all day, isn't it, on, on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then October 25th, we mentioned this before, but it certainly bears repeating, the Teen Center has its annual uh, dinner, right. uh, testimonial then, dinner. Uh, Michelle Marchetti is being honored. And uh, that's at Colonial Terrace on October 25th. So if you want to go to the Teen Center site, and you really should try to attend that. It was yeah, doing they, a great job. And I, I, we have to, I always try to reiterate what, what they do absolute incredible work. Yeah. Um, and it, not, not easy work, too. It's a difficult age, as we all know. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, and they have the, the open mic night on Fridays with Justin Beach Foundation. Right. And, um, uh, if you uh, if you were out there paying attention and you showed up last Friday night, you got, would have gotten a real treat because Bernie Williams, the ex Yankee center fielder, right. made a surprise made appearance. A, made an appearance wow. at the, over at the YCC and played a couple of numbers with the uh, yeah the kids right with the kids yeah yeah. yeah. And then uh, right now, you know, the other uh, event that we should just mention is of course the annual Halloween parade on October twenty seventh on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's at two o'clock, I, I believe. Two p.m. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And we have. Your special guest, Rosemary Panio, with us. Right. And how are you this I'm evening? I'm well. How are you both? Talking about books. Uh, you know, I, what we like to do on the show often, as we, I was explaining to Rosemary beforehand, sometimes it's just talking town business. And that will do a little bit of that with you because you were, at one point, the, the, uh, the Republican chair in the town of Yorktown, actually the Republican chair for the county. For, That's right. So you're... Secretary uh, for the yeah, state. Yeah, so you yes. had a lot of... A lot of uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so you had you, you have had your, your life in politics. My fill is what you should say. <laughs> <laughs> My fill. <laughs> so, and you're on to be, be, bigger and better things because it's, see, you've, you've just published a book in uh, for Italian recipes, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, it's, but you know, part of the show is also to showcase in, in the, uh, the, the the personalities of the town of Yorktown and the businesses, right. and, and, and in that vein. Um, I got to tell everyone to stay tuned, but eventually what we're going to do is we're going to try to f do features on all the new businesses that are opening up That's in town. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I think it's very important. And we've very had a important. lot of good ones. And, and, and it's, it's kind of interesting. We've, uh, Bruce and I and you were there to, at the uh, street, street fair. fair. Yeah. Right. And uh, we, we had a lot of people pop in. Uh, you know, we had uh, uh, the, uh, we, the string of politicos and other, uh, other assort, assorted people. But we also then did a walk around with the camera to, to talk to some of the uh, uh, other organizations that were there. But, and Costco was a big issue, both for and against, I guess, were out there. But um, it, it just uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Rob at the Nothing To It. Right, Rob yeah. Del Bazo. Yeah. Right, and right. Uh, he just opened that, which is a great... And, Catering place, yes. Yeah. yeah. Incredible macaroni and cheese. So I just, yeah, yeah, and everybody I, says I, that. I, yeah. Everybody really? talks about yeah. the macro, right. mac and cheese. Yeah. And he also won have the... have to compare recipes with him. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very good. And, and he, also, he also won the pulled pork, pull pork contest. Oh, right, on Community, Community Day. Day. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about it because um, the, uh, also what opened up very recently is uh, the Wayback Burger. Right? Yes, it's, right. It's, yes. Yeah. And, and I, I, it's, it's great. It's all fresh burger meat. Is that the place in next the, to AMP? Right, right next right, to the, the AMP. Next to the AMP? Yeah. Yeah. Really? And it's all fresh meat, so it's no, no frozen. It's, it's, so it's very good. Uh, real nice guy that uh, is running it. And we were talking about this, about you know, things opening up in town and, and kind of vis-a-vis -vis or anal analogizing the, the BJ's Costco thing and, and we're talking about, well, you, you got nothing to it, which is a catering place and lunch. Right. And uh, he's got, you know, now he's got... Right. Uh, 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 way back burgers to, you know, I guess, you know, presumably a competitor for that, that crowd. And, and then you have all these, uh, yogurt and ice cream places that yes. opened up as well, yeah, yeah. but they don't, uh, remarkably, none of these guys, the proprietors of these businesses don't mind the other business competition, right. competition because his point is 
it brings traffic in. Right. And and we would just had this discussion. Golden word in retail right. traffic. Right. traffic. Right. So we had right. you, traffic, right. no exactly. sales. Right. 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 So it, so he, the idea, even with Costco, it's uh, uh, rightfully and part of the criticism, I suppose, of the uh, of Costco is going to bring traffic. It's going right. to bring, but it's going to be bring people that otherwise hadn't been shopping in Yorktown into Yorktown. And hopefully that, you know, when we have the problem that our retail spaces or retail corridors are, uh, you know, I always had the discussion about, uh, when I used to be town attorney, we used to do the, look at the, the zoning code as far as parking requirements. We always used to talk about this, especially with restaurants, because the parking requirements are right. extra large as compared to retail space. Right. And it was, you know, it was always this concern about parking. And I said, well, the day that the day that you, we have problems finding a parking space in downtown it's a good Yorktown, time. It's a good right, time. It's, it's, <laughs> that's right. No, Don't it's worry true. about it. Right. And so, uh, but but that's you know, it's a great point Rosemary made before about. I think it was before we went right. on the air about in retailing, the word traffic has a totally different connotation because I covered retailing for many years mm -hmm. journalistically, and they talk about generating traffic. Generate right. traffic. You don't you generate, want to generate traffic, traffic. You have no yeah. customers. Right. And, 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 so, and you also had a life, life in politics and a life in retail. So life in politics, right. life in retail, life, life in sports with my uh, wonderful husband of 48 years. Uh, I lived abroad for many years. With, I, I'm very old. You yeah. know. <laughs> I've had a lot of lives. <laughs> you're, you're, you're uh, well, it's, it's funny. It's funny. I tell a story about, you know, the, you're part of the Circolo da Vinci. I'm yeah, part of Circolo yeah. da Vinci. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I was, I, I, I uh, last year in campaigning, we, we, we stopped, I stopped by it. At, at, yeah, it's, it's a great organization. Yeah, it's yeah. a great, great speakers. And, wonderful speakers. Yeah. And we really talk about our culture, our heritage. Uh, it's very, very informative, but it's also a wonderful social thing oh, as yeah. well. So. Yeah. One of these days we're going to win that bocce ball yeah. tournament. <laughs> We've all become friends. We've actually all become good yes. friends. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I absolutely had a lovely time. You know, you, you, we, you sat there in a linen, linen tablecloth table and everybody was, you know, polite and refined and we're talking about, and, and you, I get, they're talking about the, the, the old country, I guess, which was yeah. for you, uh, Italy, and the, and the recipes and and the homegrown food and it, 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 you know Dottie Lascala. She she talked quite. A, it was it was lovely. And I was yeah. talking to a couple other ladies and talking about grandchildren, children, and this and that. <laughs> and then I had to rush out of there and I had to go to the Christopher Columbus Society, oh, poor thing. <laughs> where I got the guys going, oh, you know, hugging you and kissing you on the cheek, and you know, rah, 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 rah. so I got that guy. I got you know all the guys. Were, but it was it was a great. It was an absolutely great night. But yeah, it was a, it, it, the Circular Da Vinci. Uh, that, you know that that organization. Is, you know, very, very impressive bunch well, of people. Well, we try to um, to inf educate people, uh, not just other people, but Italians as well, uh, about their heritage, right. and that's very important. And there's because there's so much good. Most of us, yeah. most people don't really know very much about their heritage. I ask people all the time when they say to me, "Oh, because my book, uh, I'm, my mother was born in Italy, or my grandmother, or my grandfather," and I say, well, "Where?" He says, "Well, I really don't know." And I look at them. I say, "How could you not know where your grandparents were born?" Right. It, yeah, it no, seems it's very a, yeah. odd to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Well, know? it's 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 funny because I you know I mean history is very important and understanding very important. It. And it's not it's 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 uh, I, I just uh, had a discussion with uh, the superintendent over here and this this morning about other things, but we got off on the track about teaching history. And I always yeah. with Ralph no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I always say you know the the shame about it is the kids are crammed into the you know uh, dates and names, dates and names, and they have to cover hundreds of years of history in about five right. or six pages and mm -hmm. and to me that's not history 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 is really the human interest story that, Absolutely. that and right. and and it, it's funny when 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 um there's these old uh, these memory experts these guys right. that do tricks you know where they have to they memorize a deck of cards and then they have to uh, you know they get a deck of cards that randomly shuffled and they they get shown and then they have to right have to uh, recreate it what they do is they 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 the trick in it is to is to uh, for each card to, to is a character or a thing, and as the cards turn over, they create a story. Right. So what they they don't they don't they don't try to remember ten of hearts nine. What they do is just if they they create the story, and the more the boys the more interesting or bizarre the story it is, the easier it is to remember. Right. And so what they do when they have to recreate the deck that they, they randomly shuffle deck, and they have to recreate it. They just go through the story, right. and that's how they do it. 
And I so my, my my point was that that's where history has Absolutely. to be told. Absolutely. Yeah. Huh? It's not names and you know the, it's, right. it's 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 the it's the human human story Absolutely. behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the thread of history really. Yeah. 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 And right. then it becomes right. interesting. And it becomes right. lively. Right. And it becomes you know it's fascinating. Absolutely. It, it, well, my my parents were both immigrants, so. Um, we, we spoke Italian in our home. I didn't speak it, actually. I understood it. But I never really made a conscious effort to speak it because you can really you, can need... You, can you speak it without moving your hands? <laughs> <laughs> it's no fun, though. So but, it's a form of ventriloquism, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I got to Italy, for the first time, I went to Italy in 1964, the winter of 1964. I was over there skiing. Um, it was like I went home. I oh, understood wow. yep. everything. Even without being there before. Even with yeah, every, right. I understood everything. I understood everyone. I kind of just blended into the scenery. And I went about the business of trying to speak fluently. Uh, and it did take me long. Where I went to high school, in, at Roosevelt High School in Yonkers, um, they didn't teach Italian, despite the fact that half of the population was Italian. Right, right. They, spoke, they, they taught Spanish, which was fine because I took four years of Spanish. So I understood the grammatical structure of the language. Actually, my Italian background helped me get very good grades yeah. in Spanish. As a matter of fact, uh, a cousin of mine and I uh, were frequently thrown out of his class because we would cut up a little bit. And he, at the end of the year, we got very good grades. Both of, he said to me, you two really do not deserve these grades, but there's no way that I could take <laughs> a regent's grade away from you. Right. But, but it helped me. They all helped me. So I don't have this hang up about languages. I think that, you know, the, the more you know, the, the more you know how to communicate with people and understand, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to learn the English, better it but is. <laughs> but uh, so it was, uh, I felt very good being there. I felt very at home. I wound up staying there for 10 years. Oh, wow. I, uh, yeah. yeah. My, uh, well, it's, it's, it is. I mean, you, you, you know, I, I think if you, um, our generations are not, are not that so far removed from our ethnic, our ethnic origins. So, um, you know, it, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm Irish German, mm -hmm. but I think if you, you know, you, so you, you put me with a bunch of Irishmen or, you know, Germans, I kind of can you know, right away relate because it's just, I'm not, right. it's just not that far separated. I, I think, I don't, but I think my, my kids, um, we would have that ability because right. it's, yeah, it's a generation right. removed and, Besides, my kids are all different nationalities, anyhow. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's. Yeah. Uh, but Tutto fa brodo, they say in Italian. What is it? Everything you throw everything together and you have soup. So I was going to say brodo. Uh, I know uh, it's soup, yeah. right? Now. Well, that. talking about soup. Yeah. Yes. You wrote a book about Italian food, right? Is yes. That, and I, and, uh, and vino wine. And wine. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Right. I wrote a book uh, called "Celebrate Italy and Its Culture of Food and Wine." Uh, Italy is made up of 20 regions, which uh, for us would be states. Mm -hmm. And each, each region has its own identity with regards to cuisine and indigenous grapes, so therefore wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I found it very interesting. I was able to pursue this really in depth because my husband uh, was a, uh, in his youth, was a professional soccer player. So we traveled around Italy a lot. I lived in a number of the provinces. I lived in Tuscany for a few years. I lived in Umbria. I lived in Piemonte. So I managed to get around. But he was really gone four days a week. So I got to just travel around and, and just see things and, and look at the oh, countryside nice. and, the, and the, uh, the vineyards. And, of course, the food I always loved because my mother was a great cook. And she was really my, my mentor with, with regard to food and cooking. And uh, so I, and I started taking the, keeping notes, and I have a huge database of recipes, but I selected recipes from some from each of the regions of Italy to put into this book, which I thought were, most of them are quite easy. You just have to be organized. You have to have an organized kitchen, but most of them are quite easy. Some of them are more difficult, but I tried to explain to, uh, to uh, cooks how they can make these in stages so that it's not such a burden the first few times you make them. So I put a little effort a few, a couple of years ago, Rock, my husband Rocco and I retired. Right. And I thought, uh, now we have to fire, think of a way to stay out of each other's way, part <laughs> of the day at least. <laughs> so his was easy because he just works out. He goes out and he goes to the sixth grade school and walks and does his exercises. So I said, you know, I think I'm going to do something with these recipes. And uh, 
because uh, I need to quantify all of them now, and I have to be sure that I don't forget them right. as I age. And my mother's not here anymore. My aunt is gone. Who am I going to call if I forget something? So I better start putting them together. And that's what I did. And that's who you learned from, your mom? Or? I learned initially from my mother. But having lived all over Italy, and also I've been going back now for 50 years. It's 49 years since wow. the first time I went there. I go back every year. I have lots of friends there, and right. my husband's family is all there. So I was able to really evolve uh, with my cooking, uh, depending upon the province that I was trying to, to cook about. Mm -hmm. So um, it just became a hobby of mine. I just started collecting recipes and, and collecting wine. Of course, I sold wine for 40 years. Right. right. At my in business Peekskill, right? in Peekskill, Peekskill 39 yeah. and a half years, we had a primarily was a wine shop, and primarily we dealt in Italian wines. Because right. we wanted to pass that on to people. The cuisine well, and the wine. Pass the Italian wine on to me anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we made and we made tons of friends while we were in business. We made yeah, so I'm many sure. friends yeah. over the years. Uh, it's been it was just wonder wonderful experience. Maybe it's a good time to just segue and mention the wine tasting. Since mention you're talking the about wine the wine tasting, yeah. yes, yeah. we are. Uh, for the past few years, I have been doing a wine tasting with a wonderful committee. Many yeah. of uh, Bruce, I think you're on I'm my on committee, committee as well. I and think I am, uh, yeah. Tony Grasso <laughs> was yes, on it, right. and Joe yeah. Visconti, and yes. a lot of other people from the hospital. Yes, right. the Hudson Valley Hospital. Hudson yeah, Valley Foundation. Hospital right. Center. Right. Right. Found, this is the foundation. Our job is to raise money for the hospital. And uh, so I've been doing these wine tastings for them every year. The past couple of years, we've had them down at Trump National Golf Course. Very nice. Mr. Trump has been very generous with us, gives us his staff, gives us the venue, and uh, is, they're very, very cooperative down there. It's a beautiful place to visit Yeah, it as is. Well. sure is. Yeah, yeah. So we have, uh, I managed to um, get some of my wine buddies from my past uh, business to donate the wine, and we ask area restaurants to donate their signature dishes or whatever they'd like, actually. Nice. And we do the pairings, and we have a wonderful time. It's a tasting, so we don't drink, per se. We just taste, and we learn how to taste, you know. Taste the wine. Right. Spit just it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, figure out how to game that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanse your palate, have some water, have some bread, have some food, and move on. Right. So we have wonderful vendors that come and donate, so yeah. we are able to raise money. And this year... The money is going to the Ashikari Breast Care Foundation. Right. Uh, that is the new Ashikari Breast Care Center. Yeah. And, and is this when? When is this event? November fifteenth. Okay. It's a Thursday, and it's from um, six to nine. Six to PM. nine. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Six to nine. It's a wonderful event. It's a fun evening. Yeah. It's a hundred dollars a person. Right. All of the proceeds, all of right. the money, not even right. proceeds, all of the money goes to the Ashikari Breast Care Foundation because right. the food's been donated, the, the wine's been donated, the oh, venue's good. been donated. So whatever whoever comes and gives us $100 to attend this wonderful evening, yeah. they're going to see their the, their whole check is going to go to the Ashikari Breast Excellent. Care Beautiful. Facility. Yeah. So it's, uh, we're very happy about it. Well, before, yeah. you also, before we got in the, on the air, um, besides uh, the recipes and food being your passion, it's also, it plays a much bigger role. Food and the and the dinner and the yes. family day is much more important than just the culinary expertise, absolutely, right? Absolutely. For you, I mean that's uh, absolutely. This was a this is a tradition for us and many people in Italy and in Europe and other places as well. Is that the family dining, the importance of getting together with your family at least once a day? Here we're lucky if we do it on Sunday. Right. But I've kept that tradition where we have Sunday dinner together. Even though my children are married and, and uh, we still have them, we still have Sunday dinner together and it gives us an opportunity to catch up with what's going on in their lives. Right. And if you're just a family, a young family, you know, you get together for an hour in the evening and you have dinner together and you talk over the day and whatever problems you have had that day, have to, you have to feel better after you've had a really nice meal and you sit down with your family and you have a chance to relax. Whatever's going to go on the day after, I think you're going to be able to face with greater ease because right. it's, it's also comfort. It's yeah. comfort food and it's comfort. So that's been very, always been very important to me. It's really the glue, I think, that holds families together. We have a little different lifestyle here than we, than we have in Europe. I say we because I, I live, you know, as you know, I'm there two, three months a year right. with my, fam my other family. <laughs> um, that they get together every day. They, 12 o'clock, everybody leaves their office, everybody leaves their school, they go home, 12.30, they sit down and have their dinner, 
but they have it in the middle of the day. Right. And they get a chance to, to talk and to spend a, a couple of hours together. They have their little nap. I mean, we can't do that here. <laughs> they have their Sounds little, wonderful. Their little <laughs> piece of lino. They have their little map, nap, and then they go back to work. And, uh, and then how, how long do they work? How they late? They usually work until about 7 o'clock. Oh, okay. They, from like 4 to 7, 3.30 to 7. And they have a light dinner. And, it, and they have it later than we do, but it's a light dinner. It's fresh cheese. It's fruit. Right. You know, they're not going to sit there and eat a steak at uh, 8, right, eight o'clock late. at mm-hmm. night. But um, so it's a lifestyle that I think that we need to make some time for. Right. Because um, even the quality of the food, somebody in this always might have been my opinion uh, that someone in the family has to be responsible for the nutrition of the family. Doesn't have to be the mother. Could mm-hmm. be the dad could be the grandma, could be anybody. But you have to eat right in order to nourish your body. And somebody has to take the time to organize right. family dining or should. Because I always tell people, why are you, I ask them, why are you eating food that's been sitting on a shelf for two years? <laughs> I mean, do you really think you're getting anything out of that? Right. So when you so think about it that to, way. I got to get rid of these stash of french fries under my seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for free. <laughs> But then uh, if it's the um, proverbial lady of the house who prepares the meal, do, do, do a lot of the uh, females there work? I mean, Yeah, many of them do. Many of them do. Because they have to prepare, at least say, a noon meal. Yeah, but you know what? They, they do it in phases. They do it some of it the night before. Right. They, everything is always very fresh. Uh, you know, they shop daily. They don't have huge freezers. They can't, couldn't afford the electricity of huge mm-hmm. freezers. Right. So they, they shop fresh. It's just the whole rhythm of life that's so entirely different. It's been people you know, talking about a healthy lifestyle and, and, and the whole culture there and the food culture. People, I think, are often surprised to hear about how you can eat so much cheese and drink so much wine, and yet they're healthy, Absolutely. right? They're very healthy. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Mediterranean diet is considered one of the best diets right. in the world. Right. Well, I, I think you know, the, the important point is that I, I, you know, what... what what, what 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 happens over here is that you know and it's, you know even in the, up in these areas I mean you you have two working parents yes right right that's what and, I was, you know, yeah, getting and, it, and, yeah and and uh, you know lunch uh, I remember my first job in a law firm and I went, you go out to lunch and my my the uh, head of the law firm said told me you know, lunch is for secretaries you're a lawyer now and I don't think mm. I've had lunch since <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's uh, right. yeah, the, the point being is that uh, you know we're all you know it, it, hustle it, and it, bustle yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, right. and very that's much true. under the gun I mean there's a, there's a, there's an enormous, enormous amount of stresses on any Absolutely. any family right. especially especially your, 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 you know the, the average family up here in Yorktown I mean they, usually it's two working parents and you have to have two working parents right. so on one to just pay the real estate taxes and absolutely <laughs> that's right. right and that's why I have a, right. I have a lot of easy recipes in my book the only key to that is that you have to be prepared so you I have a little segment on uh, your your Italian pantry mm. how, oh, how right, to right, organize right, 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 a kitchen right, right. Um, uh, things of that sort so when you come home and you only have a very few a little bit of time to make dinner for people. Well, you can always put together a salad. You could make a pesto very quickly. You can make a, a mascarpone sauce without even ever putting that it on the stove. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are things that you can do yeah. that, that you can do very quickly right. that are nourishing and that are satisfying right. so that you feel good about what you've eaten. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is, and, and, and you know, it, it's, uh, you, you know, I, 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 I the, uh, you know, I, I blame myself even my own, under my own roof that it, it gets very difficult to actually sit down with everybody. Yeah, and, right. And it, and, you know, yeah. I was, I, I've got a lot of children, but, um, and I always say to everybody, says, I have a lot of children. I said, yeah, and when it's, when it's a mess, it's a real mess, but when it's good, it, there's nothing, nothing, right. nothing greater than, the, 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 and, and the, the really great, great times right. that we have as a family Absolutely. is when we're all there in the kitchen enjoying and we're enjoying food. each other right. and right. we're eating. Yeah. And unfortunately, it, it, it happens rarely, mm-hmm. and it happens rarely because every every kid's got a different schedule. I mean, I run we used to run two cars on a weekend, and even that wasn't enough to right. just get people from one game or one practice. So, and they all have their interests, and I think, and that's all very important. Mm-hmm. But living in in a suburban environment, it requires mom and dad to drive, and it's yeah. always distances, and you, you you like to live in a house with. Uh, on, on, on a big lot, and, but then you're traveling distances everywhere you have to wherever Well, you that's have. why we, we kind of narrowed it down to once the, our children got older to once a week. 
And we sit down and we have Sunday dinner. Sunday, that's and that's how was your dinner. week? And how did you? I mean, in, I, the, in the house that I grew up in, I mean, it was literally a, a considered a sin not to be present at Sunday dinner. Right. It was required. And um, we did it belligerently sometime. But then as we grew up, we found it to be just a wonderful tradition. No, I, 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 think, oh, I, 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 I think it's, you know, it really, you know, the feast is, you know, this, the, the meal is, is not just a, uh, you know, physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Right, well. you went to and, you know, right. it really, and, you know, and any, any, you know, it's, evident any any really you know a lot of the most profound religious rituals always right. surround itself right with a meals meal. right yeah that's and, right and it's it's the idea of not just physical nourishment but spiritual nourishment that's what we did we went to mass right. and yeah. and then we came home and we had sunday dinner with the family that was right. that was the sunday yeah. ritual yeah. and of course maintaining i have a lot of stories about the the holidays food for the various holidays many of the recipes uh people will i think remember probably from their grandparents, yeah. but they probably have no idea how to make them. Right. Uh, especially the part that I have on sweets, dolce, which is all the cookies, the biscuits, all of that stuff. Mm. And uh, I had to really quantify everything because my mother, my late mother, God bless her, she really didn't make write recipes. She wrote shopping lists. <laughs> She'd say yeah. so flour, to, uh, eggs, milk, vanilla. Uh, and right, I'd say, right. but mother, how much? Until it looks right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, feel how do I know when I should do the dough? It'll you feel it, you'll feel it, you know. And so I had to sit down for about a year and a half, literally. I got up every day at six thirty, to quantify all of those recipes and actually try them out myself again to be sure that I was doing them correctly. So it, you have anything for Halloween? Or? No, <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't celebrate Halloween in Italy. But, oh, what about have you been to um, have you been to Italy in Manhattan? Have yes, been, yeah, I've been that's, that's, actually that's an amazing place. Actually, the oh. original Italy, right? Mario is, Batali is right? in yeah. Torino. Oh, okay, yeah, it's where what our a place family that is from. Is. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, yeah, right. It's on uh, Fifth Avenue, Twenty Third Street. That's the Street. original yeah. Italy, which we, my husband and I, have a tradition that when we leave Italy every year, we take all of our nieces and our uh, what do you call? You know, sometimes when you're bilingual, you forget words. <laughs> Our um, the, the other brats, uh, <laughs> the nieces and the rest. Great nieces. <laughs> okay. We call them the mishpacha. <laughs> <laughs> the great called. nieces and nephews. And we the Friday night that before we leave, we always have dinner there at Italy in Torino, which is the original. And then Mario Batali, right. along with that gentleman, right. decided to open up the one in, uh, in New York City yeah. in Manhattan. Yes. So yeah. they, Italy has a great tradition of food, provincial tradition of food. And as you go from one part of the peninsula to the other, you will notice the difference in the food. You know, right. Rome and south is the olive oil belt. Right. North of Rome is the butter belt. Right. Uh, you'll find uh, red sauces in the south because they can grow tomatoes and basil. You can't grow tomatoes and basil in the Alps, you know, so their recipes tend to be a little bit more cream sauces, things of that nature. So there really is quite a culture. Then, of course, there's the islands, which have a culture of their own. My right, next yeah. book, believe it or not, I'm actually going to go through this pain and torture again <laughs> uh, to produce something on Italy's islands huh. because they're, they're very, a lot of islands, and they're very, very interesting historically. Mm -hmm. uh, Corsica, uh, right? Yeah. Well, Corsica yeah. is now French, okay. oh, but oh. they speak Italian there. Right, right. But, you know, they removed from the political aspect that it goes under the auspices of another country, but you can't remove the, the, that, culture. the, yeah, culture. the culture. So you find that in many of the islands have a, a language entirely of their own. And uh, on the, something like Corsica, which is French, they actually do speak Italian. So uh, it's, it's, I find it interesting. My husband says, you're going to write a book about that. You and two other people are going to be interested in it. I said, well, you know what? It's for my own, <laughs> sa my own satisfaction. I'm going yeah, to right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the, the grapes and the food and the culture and the language. And, um, and then I'll decide what to do with it at some point. But this really was an, uh, something that I put together because I really wanted my family to have these recipes and uh, to be able to understand the importance of them in our, my grandchildren, for instance, who are quite little. But my granddaughter at the age of 10 already is a pretty good cook. Oh, wow. You know, she understands. Same one who plays golf? This is the same one that plays golf, <laughs> yes. So if you will. find a golf ball in the soup, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <right? laughs> so it's, uh, it's been a fun experience. How would somebody get the book or buy the book? Rosa? I'm on um, ebook. I am Amazon. 
Oh, so you can get the, the digital uh, version? Yes, oh, you can great. get the digital version. You can, it'll be available at Barnes & Noble, I think, at the end of October. Oh. Or you could call me at that number, and if you're in... Uh, and what number is it's, that? It's uh, 325 914, 914 area code. Yeah. and I will get it to you. Uh, and it's, it's Celebrate Italy? That's celebrate the name Italy of it. and its culture of food and wine. I have a large section on wines in the back. I have each region and the, the indigenous wines of those regions. Right. And each recipe unless it's a breakfast recipe, actually has a wine pairing with it. So it's, oh, uh, nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. And I enjoy doing it. And um, when I go back in the spring, uh, I'm going to do some island hopping and uh, try to, to get some of my material for, for another book uh, if I decide to go through that uh, craziness again. <laughs> but it's very hard. It's very hard work. I, I commend anybody who's in oh, the... Yeah editorial business or media it's very very hard work so it's uh it's quite an undertaking yeah. but i'm happy i've had a lot of friends who've been very encouraging on both sides of the ocean and um jenny menton for instance right. yep. did my yep. index i said i'm not doing an index i am not doing an index it's too hard she said okay stop complaining i'll come over and do an index for you <laughs> so she did she came over and she did my index you know so it, it's it, i've been very encouraged by people that's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we'll have to. Right. Next time you come on a show, we'll have to have a little. A little tasting. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. We've done that before. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We had the, yeah, the, uh, Tom DeCiara. Tom at the yeah. winery. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Came yeah. over with a couple of his, his uh, own, bought, own wine mm -hmm. that he bottled. Uh, yeah. An anniversary wine for the winery. And yeah. We even got fan mail. <laughs> what the heck uh, are you doing? Well, one, uh, one. Was, uh, yeah, We had one credit card that right. didn't appreciate the fact that we were tasting wine. I don't know if he didn't oh. like it that it was white instead of red, but. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, you know, wine to us is just something that we grew up with. Um, yeah, it, and you know, that, that's, it's just funny because that, that, that is, you know, that, that is very cultural. And, and for, the, for the Italians, you start drinking, you know, right? Kids, yeah. you know, fourteen, you know, right? And and, and and yeah, and you have a, you know, they have a, a bottle of you wine with a, lunch, a, and you have a bottle of wine. One, finger, right, you know, one finger, yes, right. One finger of, of wine, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have one finger of wine when you're about fourteen, yeah. right? And two fingers by the time you're sixteen or seventeen, and uh, and that's you know what? When I taste and when I drink wine today, I don't drink more than two fingers. Right. I, it's yeah. not about well, I, the wine. Yeah. It's not about the alcohol. It's about the flavor of yes, the wine. Yeah. But, but I, 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 you know, a lot of the Europeans are like that, too. I mean, yeah. they, they don't have this alcoholic, uh, you know, uh, very conservative approach right. to alcohol. Right. Right. And, and you know, actually, and sometimes, you know, you know so in some ways it's better because I think a lot of these kids, if they constantly bottled up and all of a sudden they can drink right. for the first time, that's when right. they get themselves in trouble. You know? Right. You know, they, they Absolutely. It, it's the culture, and you, you've, you always have wine in your home because your parents probably made wine. Mm -hmm. We made wine with Circolo for a couple of years in a row. We made wonderful wine. Um, the last one we made was really, I mean, you could, retail quality it turned out so well. So it's, uh, it's something that we all grew up with. Uh, uh, they, right. they, the neighbors that were, they would make their wine. I'd go over there every year with them. We'd yeah. make 30 gallons, 15 white, 15 red. Um, he was a, a builder, and he built an airtight house, so his wine would always go bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, had, I had a nice, drafty, damp basement. My wine would always... Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, you got to keep it. You know, you, you know, these old, you know, these old homes with the stone, stone right. foundations. Well, you yeah. know, they it's so the interesting. Right Every like place does it differently. We've been visiting southern Italy the past few years. This actually, the, the cover of my book is uh, the town in Italy that my husband was born in. Tom, and, you get that, right? You can, and you, you, you can see yeah. us strolling yeah. down the street. Right. Now, Rocco hadn't been there in many years because when he played ball, we, he spent his life really, he grew up in Torino in northern Italy. Oh. So as a ball player, he would arrive by plane in, in Bari or someplace else in Calabria, and he'd play his game, get back on the plane, and, and go back. Uh, never had much time to, to stop and spend time in his birthplace. But we've been going there now every year when we go back to Italy. And uh, they make their wine in the mountain. These are hill towns right. in southern Italy, not too far from the Ionian Sea. Oh. And they have parts of the hills with cantine, which is, you know, where you make wine, where you have wine, are actually carved out of the mountain. And they have beautiful gates. It's actually a room. 
and they, they, they belong to the families. So this family will have a room uh -huh. in this mountain, and it has a beautiful wrought iron gate, and they go in there, and there are the barrels. That's where they make their wine. That's where they store it. They don't do it in their homes. Right, right. Uh, and, and when they need wine, they go there, and they collect whatever they need. And there's a beautiful table there if you'd like to sip, sit and sip. I mean, it's, yeah, it's really, really it's, it's like a wine club. Well, I said to I said to people, what are all of these? Why are there all these beautiful uh, doorways in this in this hill? And they said, well, those are the cantine that belong to the people that are in in the town. So they go there with their beautiful oh. key about this long. So the wine store. I, I, I mean, the, the uh, my understanding, I may be wrong, but I mean, you really want it with some humidity, right? And at, right. And at about fifty at, at fifty degrees, fifty five degrees, right, yeah. which is really the the, the Temperature of the ground, right? The, the constant, yeah, the constant right. temperature of the ground. Oh, over, I was yeah. amazed. I had never seen that in any other part of Italy that I've been to. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, so it's absolutely beautiful, and yeah, they but, sit and yeah. they have actually have dinners there. Yeah, no, that is. That's nice. how big they are. Yeah, yeah, That's right. how big they are. Right. They have dinners. Oh, it sounds very romantic. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the great thing about being married to a professional soccer player is that you don't mind that he plays the field, right? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I warned you. I, had I warned you. Michael, that was bad. That was really bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, any final thoughts? Or? Well, I'm. You know, I'm uh, going around talking about my book, talking about food, the the value of eating fresh, uh, freshly made, freshly purchased food, mm -hmm. as opposed to, as I said, food that's been sitting on a shelf for a couple of years. The value of family dining. That's really. The, the important thing for my family is that they continue these traditions, that they right. continue to dine together, that they get together uh, every so often, and they, they break bread together. Yeah. And that's really the, the, the reason for doing this uh, initially. That's great. Well, I hear it's, it's great. Yeah, no, and I, it reminds me, I've got to get back to the chicken ladies. The chicken, they want to do... They wanna... <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> There was people that wanted to make sure that they could raise, you know, have chickens. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's and, a big and, fad. And now. Wasn't the law changed? Wasn't that's a big. Well, I don't know that we had a law. Of, I got to. I got to get back to it. That's but, a uh, fad. A very. It's. It's. But it's great. It's, it's. It's. You know, fresh eggs and that's the right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And they. And they eat ticks. Right. And there is oh, a big. Do. There chickens is a big ticks, difference yeah. between uh, fresh okay, eat, right. fresh eggs, and the way the chicken lives. My, you know, I. I read a whole article about this. It's odd what interests you, but I am interested in stuff like that how chickens who lay eggs that you buy at the supermarket, uh, unless it says organic or free range, basically live in a, in a box that's eight and a half by 11. And that's their whole life. Really? Yeah. They, they don't get a chance to spread their wings. They don't get a chance to, to ever eat out grass or anything that's out there. It's like there. being on death row. Yeah. So uh, as a result, <laughs> their, their eggs are not as nourishing as... Uh, yeah. yeah, well, right. I, you, you know, it, it, it's fun. You know... It, you are what you eat. Yeah, yeah well, right. you, yeah. you know, these are, you know, I, I, this morning I had a, the honor of going over to the Soundview School and, and doing a ribbon cutting, and they re restored oh, yeah. one of the barns over there right. to a cafeteria. So uh, it was one of the first times I was in that building, and, and, and one of the points that I was making, that building actually was uh, the Beaver uh, mm -hmm. family. Right. And then the, which is uh, Colwell Banker in my building, across, right. you know, on, on Underhill, where really, it was a, this was a farmland, and it was tenant farmers. So you had the Beavers that kind of ran it, and then you had the, I, I don't know who was necessarily in the Colwell Banker building, but it was the Keir family that was in my building. And then mm -hmm. behind that's Keir Street, where you have the small, there's these smaller buildings, and this was all the tenant farmers. And you, mm -hmm. you basically, you got the size house based upon the rank that you held in the, hierarchy of the farming right and 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 you know we kind of forget it because now we've got you know it's a lot of it's uh, you know there wasn't a croton reservoir there was a croton river there was you know right. it wasn't kmart mm -hmm. there were onion farms <laughs> right. so uh, you know i was trying to tell these kids you know you know there, there was what's really great about that place the sound new school is it's a it's a really it's got history to it. yeah yes well, right. and right. and the history is really important that's a, such and, a good and, point that's such a great point now you're talking about the history of yorktown which is a, Compared to my culture is, you know, right. yesterday. Mm, yeah. Right, right. And when I talk to people about their culture, uh, Italians mainly, because that's what I know, so that's what I, I right. teach or what I talk about, they're amazed. And these are very well-educated people. Right. They just have no idea from whence they came. Yeah. Got no right. idea right. What, what, what the area went through, right. the different uh, invasions. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they talk about... Uh, uh, for instance, I said, I said to my husband, are we going to Sicily this year? He said, well, I don't know. There's a lot going on because Sicily has two American bases. 
one on either side. Right. And with whatever's going on in Libya, mm -hmm. Sicily's probably going to be very deep. Right, 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 I, right, and right, right. the two right. islands that I want to go to, Lampedusa and, and another one that's a little further, uh, further east, um, Pantelleria, are really closer to Africa than they are to Italy. Right. And they're even closer to Africa than they are to Sicily, the main island. Right. You think we should be there this year with all this mm. that's going on? And I said, yeah, I th you know, I said, we'll see. You know, we'll see what's going on there because they are famous for their dessert wines. Pantelleri is famous for its dessert wines. Right. And uh, so La Lampedusa is the first stop when people get on boats because they're so desperate to get a out of uh, that uh, northern Libya, African yeah. scene. Right. They wind up in boats and going to Lampedusa. And uh, so, you know, curiosity gets the best of me also. Yeah. So I want to see what's going on. But so the history is incredible. Yeah. You know, the, 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 uh, yeah, no, the yeah. countries that, that these islands and everything belong to and, and the story of, of just that one peninsula. I'm sure that that's the story of many of all the countries of the world. Right. But how the southern tier and, and the, the middle was Etruscan, right. you know, the southern tier, what they call Magna Grecia. Uh, which really gave us wine is Magna Grecia. The whole southern part of Italy was once Greece, and the middle part, which is Etruscan, and of course the northern part, which is kind of German and French. Right. So all of these Alsace cultures. Lorraine. Hey, you yeah. can never get the. Yeah, that's the whole problem with Italians. Really? You can never get a, You can never get a govern. You can never govern them. Right? No, you <laughs> can't govern them. There's a famous right? saying. What does it say? Right? The Italians are not difficult to govern. It's in, they're impossible, impossible to govern. Right. Impossible right. to right. govern. Yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Right. But so. it, it, it's you know the history is important. Even here, and, and and we're talking about food and wine. I mean, you know, you know, this area was has a deep, you know, agricultural history. That's right. And. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, 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 we, we still have our local farms and we still have locally produced produce, uh, which is, which is very available to everybody around here. They, mm -hmm. And, uh, and everybody has got these nice big yards too, so they can have their chicken. And that, nice. it, yeah. and that, uh, I don't understand why they don't grow more. Why don't they, why don't well, you grow your own tomatoes? Or why don't you have yeah. a big pot of basil? You can go out, pick it and make your own pesto. You come in the house yeah. and you make your pesto in two minutes. Right. There couldn't be anything fresher yeah. than that. Right. And things of that sort, which... I know excite me. I don't know that they excite a lot of other people. No, they do. I, 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 oh, yeah. I, got I love the, pesto, I got, by the way. My <laughs> Christmas pesto. party last year, I, I had uh, my wife's Italian and, uh -huh, I know. and my uh, assistant upstairs, Mary Capoccia. Mm -hmm. she, she's also Italian, as you, the name can tell. And I had a guy yeah. from the highway garage. I can't remember his name. And they were all fighting, fighting over who made the best meatballs. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, yeah. I'm looking at this guy in the highway garage. I'm thinking, what are you absolutely out of your mind? You're arguing, arguing with, with them? two yeah. Italian yeah. women about uh -huh. who makes the Don't best meatballs. Don't argue with matriarchs. No, 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 no. But no. I, 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 uh, I always think maybe we're gonna have to, have, you know, I, t I t tell my wife, you're gonna have to organize the, the uh, contest, the ta meatball yeah. contest. Yeah. 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 You know, it'd be a lot of fun. People always said to me, you know, when you're in school and when you're doing things as you're growing up, you know, are you afraid of the principal? No, not really. What about the teachers? No, not really. Uh, what about, uh, no, I said, you know, you always stayed on the straight and narrow because God forbid you had to go back and tell your Her grandmother <laughs> <laughs> right. that you did something yeah. wrong or that you got into trouble. Yeah. That was the person right. that you never wanted to disappoint. Right. You just yeah. never wanted yeah. to do that. So it's, they, they played a great role. Yeah. When people say, you know, they didn't go out to work. Are you, are you joking? <laughs> they didn't go out to work. They just worked, worked. all yeah, day. That's right, right. 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 Okay. No, it's good. It's a, it was an absolute pleasure having yeah, you thank here. Thank you so much. Yeah. I hope and you like my book. And yeah, and I wish you great success on it. And uh, you. if you need a research assistant, just... Okay. Uh, <laughs> taste tester. But my husband says, unfortunately, I have to taste all of this. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a lucky man, that's for sure. Yeah. You, you need, the, what, do they, what do they call it in the politics, the guy that... that uh, what, the advance man? Advance man. Yeah, advance yeah, man, so yeah. You know, right. He's an advance man to check out the Italian right, aisles, you know. You had to bring up politics. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, <laughs> no, thanks, Thank Rosemary Paniel, for being Thank with you us. Both. Good luck on the book. Thank you. And, of course, we'll be seeing you a lot in a lot of different places. Yes. And the wine tasting at Trump National Hudson Valley Hospital Center, uh, Asher Carey Breast Cancer Fund, uh, November 15th. And they could go to the website for the hospital and yes, find out about yes. it if you'd like to. We're going to put yeah. that up, I think. Right, yeah. Right. Oh, good. So you have been watching Grace Notes with Yorktown Supervisor Michael Grace and his guest, Rosemary Panio. Thank you for watching. And be sure to catch us next time and every time because Yorktown is your town. Thank you. Thank you.